Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. I really don't understand people at sporting events. Normally laid back, relatively dignified people can turn into a shouting, slightly crazed fan when they come to a game, or even when they watch one on TV. Even my usually calm, quiet husband has been known to shout at the TV once in a while. I just don't get it. A football game is more likely to put me asleep than to get me excited. But some people eat, drink, and sleep football or basketball or whatever. It's hard to have a conversation with them during their sports-specific season without them bringing it up. If you know anything about their sport or their team, you can get into an animated discussion about it. You know who I like to be around? People who are excited about the Lord. He's all they want to talk about. When you get into a conversation with them, you just know you're going to hear, you'll never guess what the Lord did the other day. Or, God gave me a verse for you today. Or you know at some point they're bound to ask, how are you and God doing? And draw you into the conversation. People like that really encourage me. They really bring new life into my spiritual walk and make me want to share what God has been doing. And if I'm a little down, they remind me who God is and how much He loves me. I love being around them. In 1 Kings 19, God gave Elijah a friend like that. Elijah had had some physical and spiritual highs with God on Mount Carmel, but then he dropped to his lowest point. He ran from Jezebel when she threatened him and ended up under a tree, asking God to take his life. He was done, through, depressed. As part of God's encouragement, he told Elijah to anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, as his successor. The rest of his ministry, Elisha would be Elijah's servant and mentee. When Elijah found his new protege, Elisha was plowing a field. Yes, he was a farmer, not a prophet or a son of an aristocrat or anything. He was a hard-working farmer. It seemed kind of strange, I'm sure, but Elijah plodded through the plowed field to Elisha. And instead of saying, God told me to call you into the ministry, or even follow me like Jesus did, Elijah said nothing. He only threw his cloak on Elisha and walked away. Elisha apparently understood the gesture, but it took him a minute. He then had to run and catch up with Elijah to cheerfully accept the calling. Elisha jumped in with both feet. He said goodbye to his old life by killing his oxen, cooking the meat using the wood from his plow, and throwing a feast for his friends and neighbors. For him, there was no going back. This was his calling, his new life, and he was excited about it. Can you imagine how encouraging that was to Elijah? He had had to face 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel alone, and then the murderous queen. He'd had God on his side, or rather he was on God's side, but a companion in his ministry. Oh, that was a wonderful thing. And to have someone who was zealous for the Lord like Elisha must have given Elijah such a boost. Are you zealous for the Lord? Do you want to be? It's helpful to hang out with others who have that excitement. It really is contagious. And then others might even catch it from you. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.